Okay, 2000 Subaru Legacy with a 2.5. We got a PO328 knock sensor code in memory. We have no drivability problems, just a code and a check engine light. And what I wanna do is I wanna walk you guys through how I handle these knock sensor codes. Every car is a little bit different. And we're gonna go to the sensor next and do a direct measurement. Real quick, here's the wiring diagram for it. This is a Mitchell wiring diagram. A couple things you wanna look at, pay attention to, one, is the knock sensor is grounded on the block itself. So it's only got one wire. The other thing to point out in this diagram is this little dotted line around here. That is an indication of a shield. This is a shielded circuit. And the reason they'll shield circuits like this is to prevent outside radio frequency or magnetic interference. So when we go to the car, you'll probably notice that this wire is gonna be a thick single wire component just something to point out. Follow the wire, it goes over to the engine computer up here, so it's just a single wire knock sensor. Again, a couple different ways we can do this. We can adapt in, back probe the connector, use a T-pin, use our scope, and we can look at the signal while we're tapping on the block with a blunt object, pry bar hammer, next to the knock sensor, and we'll actually make the knock sensor produce a sine wave. Um, zoomed out, it would it would it would be something like this. So as you knock, as you hit on the block, you would see an AC voltage on here. Um, we're going to do something a little bit different with this first, and this system, I believe, uses a seven volt bias circuit on the knock sensor, and we're going to do some checks at the sensor itself, see what we have, and then I'll plug the theory in behind it. Okay, we're down at the knock sensor. Give you a little perspective of where we are. This is driver's side. There's a throttle plate right there, throttle cables. Right below that, there's a bolt. Holds the knock sensor in place. There are two connectors for this knock sensor. One is uh, a gray connector. It's plugged right into the sensor. And the other one's the white connector that we're back probing. That is kind of the sub harness, they call it. That actually comes with the knock sensor. So we're on the sub harness connector back probing the knock sensor. Uh, we're on a graphing multimeter right now and we're reading about two and a half volts on this knock sensor and what that line is, it is a, that is a bias line that this sensor uses. And I misspoke in the last segment, it's actually a five volt bias on this, not a seven. So the computer sends five volts to the sensor. The resistance of the sensor actually pulls it to ground a certain amount. Two and a half volts is pretty good. That's what we want to see. So a couple different checks we can do. Take a pry bar and I'm going to tap on the block next to the knock sensor. We want to see activity on the screen when we do that. So you see that AC voltage is actually riding over top of that DC. Uh, if I want to see that in more detail, I'm gonna get out of the graphing meter. I'm gonna to go to my lab scope. So I see a little bit better time base. And I'm actually gonna take my trigger and move my trigger up on a level that will kind of freeze this picture when it hits that level, hopefully. my trigger There's your AC sine wave right there. Riding over top of a DC, that's what you're looking at. That's how the knock sensor works. So this is actually a functional knock sensor right now is what that test tells you. 
Um, is this an intermittent fault? The light comes and goes? It does come and go. Yeah. So it's not constant. No. So, a couple different problems we could have. Computer wiring sensor, that's where we're at. Obviously the sensor's functional right now. Um, we're gonna focus back on this bias voltage now. You can see what the signal looks like when it's uh, producing a, or when the engine would be knocking, the computer would see something like that. And by the way, that's not what sets a trouble code on these. You get a knock sensor trouble code, it's not because the, the sensor's picking up an engine knock. You get a trouble code on this sensor from an open, sorted circuit or sensor. That knock sensor would be doing its job if it, the computer saw something like that. That would not set a code. So engine knocking is not an issue here. We're worried about the wiring or integrity of the knock sensor. So one of the things that you can use would be this bias line. If you understand how it functions, and we actually have this, if you guys remember, signal circuit integrity. At the end of my signal circuit integrity chapter in my book, I gave you an example of a knock sensor where it uses a five volt bias and how the computer uses it and how we can quickly identify circuit integrity. So we're gonna use that page in my book and plug it in right here and see what we got. So I'm gonna unfreeze this picture and um, take my time base. We could probably go back to the graphing meter. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna go to five second screen because we wanna look at a longer time period now. And what we want to do is we want to focus on the wiring of this system. One of the things you can do is to unplug the sensor, and this is what I'm showing in my book. You unplug the sensor, what you're going to read with the sensor unplugged is the computer's bias line. And we just buried our scale. Let me readjust this. We'll go to 10 volts. With it unplugged, I'm reading 4.97 volts, basically five volts with the sensor unplugged. So what that tells you is the wiring from the computer to the sensor is good. And I'm not concerned, at least initially, of that wiring in between. Now we could wiggle the harness and see if we have any drops or, or anything like that. That wouldn't be a bad test to do. If that signal changed when you were wiggling the harness, that would indicate a wiring problem between the computer and sensor. This code is generated from a resistance change in this circuit. Let me plug the sensor back in, I'll show you. This sensor is gonna have a specific resistance that's gonna pull this bias voltage down. And in this case, it's around two and a half volts. So whatever the resistance is of this sensor, that's what's pulling it down. This is very similar to a coolant sensor circuit and how it functions as far as the bias line. Internal resistor, external resistor, voltage between two resistors is dropping the circuit down. Now if I take this, I'm gonna wiggle the connector on not the, sub, uh, not the connector we're back probing, but the sub harness connector at the knock sensor. I'm just gonna wiggle this. And I want you to see, we had, had some decent changes here. You see that? All I'm doing is taking this pry bar and I'm wiggling very gently on that knock sensor connector at the sensor itself. That is a sensor problem right there. You're going down the road and at times that resistance is changing, computer's gonna see that bias line change and that's what's setting that trouble code. That test right there tells you you need a knock sensor. Now you might be thinking, well, maybe it's the sub harness connector. I'm actually stressing the pins on that. And what I've seen on these, when you're moving that connector, you're actually moving the male pins on the sensor, and that's what's dropping that out. Certainly wouldn't be a bad practice to try to tighten the pins up, but in this case, you're getting a sensor with a new connector. Let me try it one more time, see if we can make it worse. actually pretty good now that I've wiggled it. It's 
certainly don't want to break it. And I can't recreate that again. But what you can do is uh, this kind of testing. If you had a hard fault on a knock sensor, go down to the sensor, measure your bias voltage, see what it's reading. It's reading five, wiring's good all the way down, your sensor's bad. There's no re reason to even do a resistance check on the sensor. Manufacturer's gonna give you resistance specs for this. If you get onto the sensor and you're fixed at zero volts on this design, you unplug the sensor and it jumps to five, again, your harness is good, you need a sensor. So a little bit of a lesson on a bias voltage and we could definitely see resistance changes wiggling that connector. That is where our problem is on this car. I'm gonna feel comfortable putting a knock sensor in this. I'm not worried about the harness, not worried about the computer.